Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, it's lovely, lovely to see you all. Um, and uh, thank you so much for joining us for, for, for this session. Um, I really, really hope that it's going to be something that's going to be really useful for you um, in, in, in terms of um, a pr program and things that are helpful to you with um, whichever kind of area of scouting you are involved in. Um, so just before we start, um, I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm James. I'm the Deputy County Commissioner responsible for programs. So um, I kind of oversee our program team who are, who are responsible for all of our um, centrally provided uh, program opportunities um, and program support to uh, to districts as well um, and I'm joined by um, three people um, thank you so much to Carrie Carrie do you want to give us a wave there's Carrie um, so um, in fact Carrie do you want to introduce yourself rather than me doing it for you fair enough hi everyone I'm Carrie I'm the assistant county commissioner for Cub Scouts I've been in the role since late 2016 um, but I'm also still a cub leader, Arkela, for um, St Chad's Cub Pack in North Leeds. Brill, thanks, Carrie. We've got Susanna as well. Hi, yeah, I'm Susanna. I'm the Assistant County Commissioner for Beaver Scouts. Probably been doing that for about three years. And I'm also a Beaver Scout lead. I run two colonies in Boston Spa that I've been doing for more years than I like to remember, really. Thanks, Susanna. And we've got Becky. Hello, I'm Becky. I'm the County Cub Scout Leader. So that means I work alongside Carrie to sort of provide opportunities for Cubs throughout Leeds and Wakefield. Um, and similar to the two, I'm a Assistant Cub Scout Leader in Farsley, which is in West Leeds. Amazing. Thank you. So, um, what I will do then is um, I'm hoping that this will be a little bit interactive and actually we're a, re we're a really good number to, to be able to have some good discussions as well. Um, what I do have, um, if I share my um, slide screen, is just an opportunity for us to um, learn a little bit more about um, you, the sections that you're with, um, and also what you want to get out of this session because We've, we've got something planned, um, but also I, I'm keen to know if, um, if there's something particular you want to get out of this hour. Um, we, we're at a number whereby we can, we can um, freestyle a little bit um, to give you hopefully something that's really helpful for you. Um, so all I'm going to ask is if you have, if you're whatever device you're on, um, if you could, if I find my slide, um, head to this website for me. It's called, it's www.menti.com um, and pop in that code that's on the bottom or you can use a smartphone to scan the QR code that's on the screen um, and it will ask you, um, I hope, um, just which section you are from. Um, if you are having any trouble with that, please do just shout up, unmute yourself and shout up because um, I hope um, it should be fairly straightforward. James, which one do I apply to? Um, you, you, whichever one you choose, Anna, uh, Anne. Um, you, you can go for the other one if that's easier. Right. So. I can see that that's filling up. Let's see, have we got everybody Two. I think there's one we're missing. Is there anyone who's not managed to get on there? Oh, perfect. Maybe that's everybody and I just can't count, um, which is great. So, um, Lots of lots of cub volunteers, um, one one from Scouts um, and a couple for, with with um, other roles as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now? It's me, the other one. Oh, is it? Oh, perfect. Yeah. And somebody else. Um, is there should be another question that's now appeared on your screen? Um, I'm just really keen to know what you want to get out of this this um, kind of hour hour that we've got for our workshop. Um, so you, it's a free text one, type whatever you want, um, but, but do just, and you can, sub, I think you can submit as many times as you want, but um, what would you like to get out of the session? And what I will do is put those results up so you can see them as they come in.
This is all looking great. Fantastic. Do keep typing if there's anything else that you want on there. This is fantastic. So hopefully you can see on your screen um, the things that have come in. Um, we've got some at the top there, and then I'll just scroll down and you can see what everybody's put in. Fantastic. So what I will do is now I've got a bit of an idea of that. Um, we will crack on. So on my, there's one more thing that I just wanted to ask. And actually, um, we can probably do this by way of, apologies, I've got a million screens up here. So let me just find the right one. Um, just by way of hands, because I can see um, most of you've got cameras on, which is great. Um, or you can use the hand up button um, within Zoom as well, if you'd like. Um, in, in terms of where you are, um, having got back to, um, in, in, in the process of getting back to face-to-face -to -face, um, after everything that, that, that we've been through lockdown-wise, um, just stick your hand up if you um, are, kind of, are kind of back now face-to-face -face, um, and, and, and that's what you're doing with your section. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's everybody. Fantastic. Um, in which case, that's really, really helpful. Um, in, in, term, in terms of where we go from here. So um, what we put together very briefly um, is uh, a little bit of a, a guide around um, programs, particularly programs post COVID as well, which hopefully is helpful to you. Um, a little bit of information for you about residentials post COVID as well. Um, and and um, what I'm gonna do is keep referring back to that, um, that information that you've all put in just in, in, in that, um, Menti survey just there um, so that hopefully we can cover off as many of those things as possible. What we're going to do is we're going to all stay together for the next maybe um, 10, 15 minutes or so. Um, and then we're going to split out slightly um, so that um, those people who are Beavers or Cubs volunteers um, will we'll go into a breakout room with Susanna and Carrie and Becky. Um, and those people with scouts or explorers or any other role um, will come in with me um, and we'll have a little bit of a chat, um, just a little bit more specifically around your sections um, and hopefully answer some of those questions as well um, that, that you've put forward in that. So hopefully that's OK. Um, so let's get cracking. I will um, just share those slides with you again, um, just to give you a little bit of an overview um, then around um, program and where we are at at the moment okay if you do have any questions at any time feel free to put anything in the chat or just unmute yourself and shout out i don't mind um so in terms of program at the moment um we know we've been through so many stages uh through, throughout lockdown of um different uh, different levels of what we can do um, and we're now back to um, a, a kind of level where, um, yes, we do still need to consider um, COVID and COVID safety within our program, um, but we can do a lot more than perhaps we, we were able to do previously, which, which is very nice. Um, we've also got to bear in mind a little bit that things might change. Um, I, I don't think any of us know what will happen in the future. Um, so, so it's about being prepared for that as well. Um, Let's go on to this one. So what, one of the key things that, that I really wanted to sort of get across when, when we had a chat today was that program planning now um, shouldn't really be any different to program planning pre-COVID in terms of what you would do. The key, the key focus is on um, what, uh, what can you do to make your activities, uh, to, to manage that risk, that COVID risk within your activities. And we can talk a little bit more about that within... Um, uh, around specific activities in our breakout rooms. Um, obviously, don't, don't forget your, um, your activity risk assessment. And there is a session on risk assessment later today. Um, I believe it's at three o'clock, um, which, which will go through a little bit more that, that kind of risk assessment process, because we are in a position now where we do need to be writing down um, our risk or recording in some manner um, our risk assessments for our sessions. Now, that absolutely doesn't have to be onerous. 
um and 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 it can be made very straightforward um but but we've got to have that kind of written record now and and i know they'll talk a lot more about that in the risk assessment session later um remember also we've got a, a great system um to, to help us with with managing that covid risk in in and patrols six sixes sorry lodges and um, because we're naturally putting our young people into groups um and I know, Carrie, you were saying earlier, weren't you, that uh, you've grouped your sixes based on their schools to help you with that. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so um, our cub pack are largely, all the children largely go to two schools. There's a few anomalies, but most of them, it's two different schools. And normally, historically, I would always mix the sixes so people are getting to meet other people from other schools. But at the moment, during COVID, um, and at the moment, and we've said we'll probably do it right through until next summer at least, is each six, um, it's a variety of age ranges, so we're not limiting it to school years, because you obviously need the older ones to help the younger ones and things, but we're keeping it to that school, um, just so we can help reduce any risk of transmission, um, If because we know that one of the schools had a huge outbreak just before half term. Um, so we were trying to reduce the transmission, which the parents have been grateful for. Brill, thanks, Carrie. So, so there, there's a, a, just something really easy that we can do, um, ju just just to as as, as something to uh, to try and control that a little bit. And 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 it's important to note as well that yes, we we absolutely need to make sure that we are um, being being super safe, managing that risk. Um, but that should that we, we can still offer our activities in a manner where we, we're still able to offer scouting. And and that's so important when we're in the position we are. We've been in in so many lockdowns and this and that and the other. Um, and and the, the positive effect um, on both young people's well-being and the well-being of adults um, in terms of being able to go to um, scouting activities, take part in activities outdoors, this and that and the other, um, is so beneficial that it's so important to, to, to balance that um, and pick up some of these top tips that will help. The other one that I've put on there, just as a little reminder, because I'm sure you're aware of it already, is um, top awards. So your Chief Scouts, Bronze, Silver, Gold, um, and all of the other um, series of top awards that, that Explorer Scouts take part in, um, still have the, the, the um, option of being adapted should you need to. Um, what we don't want to do is for young people to miss out on achieving their top awards um, in each section um, because COVID has caused an issue with that. Um, there is a lot of guidance on the Scouts website, and I've got a. Re uh, I don't know I've got, if I've got the link, but I've got the text which which will put point you in the right direction on the next slide if you've not seen that. But all the way up until December 2022, um, you can, as as leaders within your sections, apply appropriate adaptations um, to the top awards process um, to help your young people to achieve those. If COVID has, has put them in a position where they're going to be unable to do that. They can also continue their top awards into the next section, but it's worth thinking about if that's the, the kind of route you want to go down, the, um, the logistical challenges of that. Um, because once a young person moves up, say from Beavers to Cubs, they're going to be working on their Cub program in their Cub sessions, um, and they're going to start their work maybe towards their Chief Scout Silver. So if they've still got bits to work work towards for their Chief Scouts Bronze, maybe it can be a little bit difficult logistically um, to do that. So um, it's worth bearing in mind you have the flexibility to adapt um, those requirements if you need to within reason, um, and, and I'll share a bit more guidance on that in a moment. On, in fact, there we go. So here are some resources that, that might help you as well. Um, so you might well have seen the Scouts Activities database. If you haven't, I strongly recommend that you have a look. It's at scouts.org.uk forward slash activities. Um, and the Scouts have pulled together a whole range of different activities with instructions, with some top tips on making them COVID safe um, that will help you um, when you're planning your program. If you're a, a group or a section that uses Online Scout Manager, that also has an activities database built within it. Um, so that's something somewhere you can uh, see activities that other people have done and pull those off. Um, talk to other people in your district as well. Um, talk to other people on the call today. See what other people are doing um, and, and what kind of program ideas other people have pulled together.
There are various resources on social media as well. Um, so we've got a Central Yorkshire Scout Leaders Group. That's for any leader in the county, any adult volunteer, actually, um, in, in the county. So you could all join that if you wanted to, if you're on Facebook. Um, if you're a Beavers volunteer, we do also have a specific um, group that's recently been set up for, um, for Beavers volunteers, um, which is there. There, is, there are also a multitude of other um, Scout-related um, groups on social media. Um, one that often comes up in conversation is this one, first Facebook scout group. Um, the only thing that I would add on there, which is the note that I've added on my slide, it's great for activities ideas, um, but I wouldn't necessarily use it for um, other scouting related advice because um, you, you get advice from all sorts of different people and it's not necessarily always correct, but it, they, there are some good activities ideas on there. Um, if you're on, if you're looking at YouTube, the Scoutadelic YouTube uh, channel also has some great activities ideas. Um, and on the bottom here is the one that I was talking about in terms of your top awards adaptation. So I've not put the web link on here um, because it is um, quite long. But if you just search on Google for Scouts um, adaptations to top awards, um, that will take you to the page with all the details on the flexibilities that you can apply um, for, for, for top awards as well. So hopefully that's super duper helpful. Um, I am just going to talk very, very briefly, uh, again, hopefully, helpfully as well, a little bit about residentials. Um, if I just make it so I can see everyone's faces, just pop your hand up if you can, if, if you either have already or are thinking of in the very near future, putting on um, a residential experience for your young people. OK, a few people. Fantastic. And um, what I'm going to do is um, is just talk through um, some things that might be helpful to you. Um, and also, if it's not something you've considered yet, um, if you're not sure how it works in the current climate, um, I'll, I'll talk through a few little bits that will hopefully help you with that as well. Um, and then we'll split out into our um, groups to have further discussion. Um, so. Oh, hang on. There's something else I needed to do first. I'm so sorry. I've got another slide. Um, so the, the other thing that I wanted to point out um, is these two fantastic people who you can see on your screen, um, because I know that um, a number of people have asked in the past around um, activities and activity permits and how can I lead this activity? How can I gain the experience to lead um, this activity? Um, and these are the two people who are absolutely key to that. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit inf of information here, which might be helpful to you. So the two people you can see on your screen, you've got Sue on the left and Sue is our Assistant County Commissioner for Activities. So Sue is the person who um, helps us to deliver all of those things that we want to deliver. Sue is the person who can advise you if you um, want to do a particular activity, but aren't really sure what to do, aren't really sure um, on maybe the rules around it or things like that. Um, Sue will absolutely be happy to help you there and, and Sue's email address is on the screen. The other person who's on that screen is Ian Chappell. Um, Ian Chappell's email address is also on that screen and Ian is the manager of our activity permit scheme. So Ian's the person to talk to if you want to become uh, qualified, for want of a better word, to lead a particular adventurous activity. Um, so you might know we have within scouting what we call the permit scheme for adventurous activities and that makes sure that every um, adult who is leading a, an adventurous activity with those um, perhaps slightly higher risks um, is someone who is experienced and, and qualified to do so. And within the county, we have opportunities for training um, and assessment to become leaders uh, in hill walking and um, in climbing on our climbing tower at, at Bram Hope Scout campsite, um, on, in archery um, and other activities as well on request. So if there's something that you want to know about um, how you become qualified to get a permit or you want to... Um, start some training for a permit, Ian's the man to talk to. So, so he's the man who you can drop an email to um, and, and will be more than happy to discuss with you um, how you might go about doing that. Um, under 18s can also get activity permits. So, so that's maybe an interesting thing to, to point out if you have any young leaders. Um, what we tend to say is that um, where we issue an activity permit um, to an under 18, and when I say under 18, we're usually talking about someone in the Explorer Scouts age range or a young leader or someone like that. Um, where we issue a permit in that sense, what we usually say is that that young person does need to be accompanied by an adult leader who will help them with managing the group, but they will then deliver the technical side of whatever the activity is. Um, so that there's another opportunity. And again, Ian's the man to talk to there. 
Um, it's worth considering though what you can do without a permit because there's so much that you can do without a permit and um, Ian and his team are currently working on what they've called walk and talk sessions um, so they're sessions that are aimed at building the confidence um, of leaders who want to take groups out in um, walking in terrain that is not classified as terrain that needs a, a permit to lead in um, so it's under uh, 500 meters height usually um but you can you can get some quite challenging terrain within that definition um quite a lot of ilkley moor is is what we call terrain zero so you don't need to have a, a qualification to take young people out there but it can still be quite a challenging place to go um so so that they are putting on some sessions there as well so that's the thing to keep an eye, eye out for if you're interested um in that please do email Ian um, and he, he will be happy to uh, to point you in the right direction for those sessions as well um, if you or anyone else you know um, is interested. I'll quickly touch on our two sites as well. So we know we've got our campsite at Bramhope, um, which, which is in operation, is there for groups to book. And we've also got our water sports centre at Old Walk, um, which isn't open yet, but will be open for the next season, which I believe will be in April next year um, so I, I'm not sure if they're taking bookings yet Becky's nodding at me they are taking bookings um, so if you're wanting a water sports session um, for any time April or afterwards then um, just head on to the Central Yorkshire Scouts website and you can find a link to um, Old Walk's website where you can get a booking in for that as well um, so, so that's there too. You can book not for a water residential activity but if you want to book the accommodation before then the taking bookings for next springtime. I don't know how early they're doing, but I've got a cub camp booked in March there, which we can't do water activities because it's too early, but we can use the whole accommodation. Amazing. Yeah, great point, Carrie. Thank you. All right. So super quickly on residentials then. Um, so you're thinking about wanting to get back to camps, um, residentials, things like that. Um, maybe not so sure about how, where you sit um in the current climate so so let's just have a super quick look um in terms of what's different to pre-covid well good hygiene but good hygiene is always has always been super duper important on camp um it's just something to make sure that, that you're thinking about as well so um are people um sanitizing when they get there are you making sure you are absolutely on top of hygiene um around food and meal times and things like that um that's something that, that you'll, you'll have been doing on camps all of the time anyway, um, but it's also important now. Um, in terms of lateral flow testing, um, there is no absolute requirement for people to be lateral flow tested to be to be on a residential uh, experience now. However, what the scouts say is that they uh, they strongly recommend that anybody over the age of 11 um, to, undertakes a lateral flow test um, before they come to camp um and before they depart from camp and then also if if your um, if your camp's any longer than the weekend they, they keep repeating those every 48 to 72 hours um and and that is just a precaution but like i say it is a strong recommendation we can't force anybody to do that um but um but it's absolutely encouraged one of the things to think about though is young people and adults as well perhaps might not necessarily have been on a residential experience a camp for maybe two years one year two years um what what's happened to their skills so so have a think about that within within the context of your group your young people do do those young people still know how to put up a tent confidently how to manage themselves around a campsite do you need to think about doing some things um in your sessions um in your weekly sessions perhaps that will that will remind them of some of those those important skills that they need do you need to think about having maybe some additional adults around to, to support those young people um to, to make sure that they're looking after themselves um and that they're doing everything that they need to do so so bear in mind there will have been a skills fade and there will have been a skills fade both for uh, for young people and perhaps for adults as well um and once you've thought about what those processes are that, that you're going to undertake to make sure that you are COVID safe, so um, thinking about your hygiene, thinking about your testing that you're going to, you're going to perhaps recommend, um, other things like that, um, you want to build those COVID safe processes into your normal risk assessment. So there's no require, requirement for an additional COVID risk assessment. It just sits within your normal camp risk assessment, which you'd then send to your DC or the permit holder would send to your DC with the Nights Away notification form. 
things you might want to consider accommodation um we we were on the jamboree selection camp uh, last weekend we had uh, almost 100 young people um on there on that weekend um they all were older scout or explorer age range and largely um slept in their own tents we decided to go for single occupancy because that absolutely reduced that risk um of, of the, the accommodation being a, a transmission factor. Um, clearly, that's not necessarily the best option for every age range, um, because you also need to think about the, um, the, the safeguarding aspect of that, of having a young person on their own in a tent as well. But um, if, if you're going for multiple occupancy, whether that's room or rooms or tents, try not to fill them to the maximum. Try to leave a little bit of space. Try to ventilate them overnight if you can, um, and, and encourage people to, to wrap up maybe a little bit warmer to compensate for that. Um, and certainly try and um try and ventilate them during the day um and and do do avoid using that sleeping accommodation for social activities as well so you do your social activities in another place which you can ventilate maybe a little bit better all things that will help you out um there are quite a few of us who um well if if i look um be Becky's Becky's group have recently been on a camp. Carrie's group have recently been on a camp. Um, and as I alluded to, we just had the Jamboree selection camp, which was um, on my nights away permit last weekend. So um, if you've got, in fact, I might just pass over to Carrie and Becky um, very quickly, um, just to sp maybe speak a little bit about what this is like in real life, um, actually making this happen. Because I certainly found it's much more straightforward than perhaps we were worrying about. Um, Carrie, Becky, don't know who wants to go first. Um, so we had a group camp, so beavers right through to um, explorers. And we were concerned that we might not get the uptake and that parents may be concerned, not necessarily the young people. Um, but actually the uptake was fantastic. Um, so insofar as the, the perception that some people may be concerned about letting young people go on residential experiences, that certainly was not our experience. The one thing that I would say is, especially for the younger age, which you've already mentioned a little bit, James, is we have so many young people who have never camped before um, because in reality, our last Cub Camp was a residential in January 2019. So the majority of those cubs have now either moved up to scouts already or the, the very oldest cubs. And the beavers, the last time the beavers went on a camp was September 2000 and whenever. So I think they'd counted that there were maybe about three beavers who'd ever had any experience. So it was, we didn't have to think about all the really exciting things and the more dangerous type of activities that we would normally do because to them just being in a tent was amazing. Making s'mores on a fire was amazing. And um, just being with the friends again and having that freedom and playing games, um, all of that. So actually it made planning a lot easier because we didn't have to think outside of the box that they always get to do this and they always do that. We were giving them so many new experiences anyway. Um, and I think the other thing really was scouts, it's easier, but free time, um, and I bang on about free time anyway, but free time is when the majority of incidents happen in scouting, especially on camps. You don't normally get horrible incidents when you're running archery and climbing and axe throwing because we all make sure that we're properly supervising them and they're extra specially safe and things like that, cooking and fires, etc you get the accidents when the young people have got free time and they're running around playing their own games and you have got some supervision but you've not got that full control and we just knew that with the excitement that the young people had and the lack of knowledge as to what was safe where was safe to go what the campsite was like that made that risk at free time even greater so we decided not to have any kind of free time and we had a really full program um, but it was easy things that we did. It wasn't really difficult things, but we made sure we just tried to eliminate that risk. Um, and then the things, you wouldn't put cubs or beavers in a tent by themselves um, because we know that being homesick is one of the most um, problematic things that we'll have as a beaver or a cub scout leader on a camp. Um, but what we did was we made sure that they were with a couple of friends that were their friends from school or wherever. So again, we we're minimizing that risk, but also they were comfortable um, with who they were sharing a tent with. We didn't put them in 
groups of six, like sometimes you may do wick empty to threes. Um, tried not to do twos in case someone did end up going home and then you had one person by themselves and had to deal with moving them somewhere else. So we tried to do threes. Um, but then I just echo everything that you said, James, in terms of hygiene, really important, even more so than normal, um, air in the tents, etc. Real. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, Becky? Um, so my cub camp, we decided we were going to start indoors, mainly because of the skill levels. Like we said, we had pretty much a full new cub pack who had never been anywhere before. So we wanted to start at a very basic level so we could build that up for the future um, as well as sort of their skill levels we had lots of people even if they had been away from mums or dads once or twice their confidence we found was very lacking so for us it was starting at that very basic level making them really comfortable and building on that so our next camp they've already asked us to plan it um, is going to be an outdoors going to be camping because they've gained that confidence of they know each other really well now they trust the leaders a lot more they feel comfortable with what they're doing um, and then top, again, echoing what James and Carrie said, we had door rooms, we didn't fill them completely full. We wanted to make sure there was a bit of space so everyone could be spread out. Um, we actually found that the sites that we used had really good risk assessments there for us and really good rules. And they were really supportive of us to go to their site and use their facilities. So they could not do enough for us to make sure that we were comfortable with what needed doing, that we had all of our risk assessments, everything in place. They were really supportive. So if you're not sure about anything, that's a really good place to start because they've had groups there before. They know what's needed. And yet, like I said, that they couldn't help you anymore to make sure that you had everything in place to make it as safe um, for everyone that went. Um, we also decided on our camp that we were going to invite some of the cubs who had literally just moved up into scouts because, again, they'd missed out and they normally have it as a bit of a sort of celebratory thing to come on camp and they can have their moving up ceremony and things like that. So we thought it was such a lovely idea to invite them back. And actually, they absolutely loved it. They could, they, they got to be able to, those older scouts who got to teach all the young ones what to do, but they'd missed out and they just wanted time to run around outside and enjoy all the activities. Um, so if you can do that, for me, that was a really beneficial thing for them and for us as leaders to see that they'd sort of completed their time in Cubs. They had a sort of final hurrah before moving up and we did their moving up ceremony on the last day of camp. Um, and I will say, yeah, we did lateral flows and all the sort of things that James talked about, but I will say every single person that went enjoyed it, not just young people, the adults. You saw the photos on the screen there. They were from my Cub camp. The Cubs and the adults alike got stuck into all the activities they couldn't stop talking about it after the event. They were absolutely buzzing about it. Um, so if you're really not sure, please have a go. Please try, because trust me, you will really enjoy it and you'll realise how much you missed it just as much as young people did. Amazing. Thanks so much, Becky. Um, so so um, it goes without saying, you are more than welcome to speak to any of us um, if we can ever be of any help with, with, with any of this kind of stuff. Um, and I'll pop our email addresses up just before we finish the session today. Um, don't forget, you've also got Nights Away advisors in your districts as well um, who are there to advise, to help, to support. Um, if, if you would like um, any particular assistance with um, getting back to residentials, things like that as well. Um, and there is also lots and lots of um, information on COVID safe nights away on scouts.org.uk as well. So without further ado then, um, we've perhaps spoken for a little bit longer than I intended and I apologize for that, but hopefully um, at least some of that was, was, was of some use to you. Um, we'll, what we'll do now is we'll split out. Um, so if you are a Beavers or Cubs volunteer, um, in fact, I'm gonna let Elizabeth explain what you're gonna do because I don't know which buttons you're gonna press. Um, so yeah, so I've just I've just opened a breakout room, um, which you should be able to should have popped up on your screen to give you an option to join. Um, hopefully you can see that. So if you're a volunteer in Beavers or Cubs, we'd like you to please join that breakout room. I think with it's going to be Carrie and Susanna. And going Becky in there. as well. Oh, and Becky, yeah. Yeah. Um, are going to go in there and talk Beavers and Cubs things, and then anybody else can stay in this room um, and talk about the older sections. Um, so hopefully, yeah, if you want to click join, you should be taken through there. And it should obviously oh, Sarah's done it, so yeah, obviously it's working. That's good. Um, and then yeah, it should take you into the breakout room. I haven't got anything popped up on my screen. Oh, that's okay. I will assign you into it, Carrie. Sometimes I think it depends 
what version of Zoom you're running on. So, um, but I can put you in, so I'll put you in. And anybody else, if you're not able to get in, just let me know and I'll um, put you in. Oh, Wendy, fab, let me just assign you now. There we go. And so hopefully everybody else wants to be in this room. Fab. Amazing. All right. So I think that get, that puts us in a, a much easier position to be able to just have a bit of a chat because there's, um, well, there's three of you now because there's Anne and Andy and Andrew. Um, and um, we, we can hopefully give you something that's that's of use to you. So um, in, in terms of program discussions, then just 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 super quickly, is there anything in particular that, that you'd like to sort of get from other people while, while we're kind of discussing? I, I'd like to know when the grammar school go camping, they've always had six to eight in a tent. Mm -hmm. The school has said one to a tent. What, how can we persuade the school to say it's all right to go six to eight to a tent again? Good question. I mean, I, I would suggest that you probably don't go to that maximum capacity. But yeah. if you look at the um, guidance on the Scouts website, and I can email that to you afterwards, Anne, if that's of any help, yeah. um, that, that tells you a little bit more about... Um, what the scouts consider is safe. Um, and so their recommendation is don't fill to maximum capacity. Um, but then I, I, I think the other argument is, is the safeguarding one. Um, yeah, yeah. And do you want a lot of people who've never camped to be in, on, their, on their own overnight in, in a tent on their own? Um, and, and I think that's, that's the other, other kind of discussion yeah. to have, but I can send that over to you, Anne, um, yeah, afterwards. Really. Yeah. Perfect. Other things you can throw in is doing like top to toe, so um, so you alternate the sleeping pattern yeah. with each side just to give maximum head space. So instead of all lining up heads together, which is you, what you'd normally do, or you find just uh, think of that new dynamic. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good shout, Andy. Andrew, how about for you? What 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 would be really helpful for you in 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 this discussion? I'm quite new to this. I've only okay. done um, uh, four activities on, and I go on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing is, I suppose the biggest thing is, I don't know when I'm organising an activity or coming up with one, uh, where to go to to find out what I can, something that will help them build towards an award. It, okay. It's just, you know, something that, um, that the, either the other guys suggest or they'd enjoy. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, what might be really useful to you is um, if I just find the information that is um, online that will help you with that, um, because I think that might make it a little bit clearer. So I'm just going to look for that as I speak. Um, and Andrew, are you uh, scouts or explorers? Uh, scouts. Right. Assistant cool. scout leader at Cookridge Mass. So just give me two oh, seconds. Mess, they, they <laughs> so I know I use OSM quite frequently. Uh, so I'm, I'm the group scout leader there, but I've been a scout leader, a cub leader and a beaver leader and, and probably quite a few other roles in, in my time. So we, we do link it when you're using your OSM and you're pulling the activities up and it comes up with the badge suggestions and then you can go into the badge areas and look at the mm. requirements for the for the gold and, and all the activity badges and stuff. So I, I do use that probably more than anywhere else because it's sort of all contained in sort of a one-stop shop. Um, but again, I, I don't know if your group uses OSM. What is OSM? It's Online Scout Manager. It's, it's something that you can... You can uh, get either free subscription. It gives you a basic one so you can manage member details. But then you can mm -hmm. also subscribe to sort of a silver or a gold level and you get more functionality the more you do. For, for a section, it's something like £43 a yeah. year for the whole functionality. But it's really, it, really good. It does. It takes a lot of hassle out of it. You can email parents securely. You can post events and... Wow. Yeah. It, it really it does save an awful lot we, we've been using it now for about two years in in various groups and things and 
I, I wouldn't go back to not having it. Where, yeah, we where don't exactly? use it, and it, I'm just looking at the preview screen. It's absolutely brilliant. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I would I would make a strong case for that. I mean, right, I'm off. <laughs> with the with the with the group I was with um, until very very recently, we've probably been using it for sort of four four years or so, and and it's a game changer in terms of your administration. Um, the the other thing that might help you, Andrew, is um, what's on the Scouts website, um, which is on the screen that you can see or sh should be able to see now. Um, so if you go scout, go to scouts.org.uk forward slash scouts. Um, and that takes you to the, the the specific information for the scout section. Um, it's all been reorganized recently, but um, if I scroll to where it says scouts awards, um, then you can you can find out more information about your challenge badges. Um, so I can click on that, for example, and there's my chief scouts gold award, which is the top award that, that in the scout section. So that's that's what they want to be kind of working towards over their their three four years in scouting. Um, and if I click on that, it'll tell me the requirements for that, which are all the challenge badges plus six activity badges, essentially. Um, so then I can see these are all my challenge badges. So for example, if I click on um, the skills challenge, it gives me all of those requirements. Um, and when I was a scout leader, what I used to do was tend to focus on one of the challenge badges over the course of maybe a term, sometimes a little bit longer. Um, with, with the challenge badges as, as they are now, they tend to take maybe a little bit longer, um, but it gives you a bit of a focus. And then if you think about what your program might look like for a young person who's in scouts for three years or four years, then over each term, they might have an opportunity to do a different challenge badge um, alongside, if I go back again and back again to that first page um, where it says activity and staged activity badges. So alongside some of these, and these might just be things that, that interest your young people, essentially. Mm-hmm. So hopefully do that's they, a... do scouts know that they're all these, the, who, does anyone carry these badges around in their head or is it a case of no. doing a load no. of research before you do this? No. It's, yeah, have, use the resource that's online or if you use online scout manager, use that as well um, yeah. because that gives you the list. I mean, I, I certainly can't and I've, I've, I've uh, been involved in scouting and particularly the scout section for, for sort of eight, nine years and I can't remember them all. Um, but use that list to help you what sometimes we kind of pull together a list of a few different ones that um that might link in with what we're doing and then just say to the young people look which ones do you want to do let's have a bit of a vote for some of these um and, and they kind of choose some of them are easier to achieve some of them are much more difficult to achieve just because of the logistics um but but um they're all there for you you can download the posters off scouts uh, or through oh yeah to our order so you can actually put them up in your meeting place as well so actually the scouts can go and have a look and think oh there is a badge called that and then you can set them a task of going away online to find out about it yeah i think if you're looking for specific activities as well james could you click into one of the badges so i think yeah. in each badge page um the website if you scroll down to the bottom brings up activities that you could do that um hit those badge requirements so that's something i've right. done when i've been planning programs we just have like okay we're going to do the experiment badge or something and then it just brings you up all the ones that could relate to that um so it's a helpful way if there's a sp specific badge you're looking for activities for to find inspiration yeah that's really cool actually i've never seen that um okay it's good because you can use the activities finder as well but i found that really useful for if you're looking for something specific for a specific one even in spanish you can do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah how'd you get to that sorry so all i did was i was on that page with all the so this was the home page i was on yeah i clicked into the bit with the activity badges and i would imagine is it the same for the challenge badges elizabeth i um, think i think it is but i'm not 100 percent sure i'll have a look in a second picked a badge clicked on it um and then just scrolled down to the bottom of the page and here are six activities to help achieve this badge. I'll just have a little look and see if you get that for challenge badges as well. Right. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, you still get it on your challenge badges as well. So you can scroll right down to this kind of teal colored bit. And uh, there's lots of ideas there, which is great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. So that's Thank you. all right. Hopefully that's of some help to you. Um, yeah. And how, how are you finding kind of getting your programs together and, and program planning and things like that? Is that, is it coming to you? Uh, um, there was the meeting for the program. I didn't realize it would be three hours, sorry, three and a half hours without an agenda. So I was wow. like scattered. It was about nearly 11 o'clock by the time we got out, but it was once for the term. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That what you've just shown me is a game changer because I, it, it's it's easier to make to put activities together if I know that we're aiming towards something. We're not just trying to do glorified childcare on an evening. That the, that's it. There is a structure. So that's yeah, exactly. And I think that's yeah. that's the key difference between us and and other other organisations that that essentially look after young people because we're aiming for them to get somewhere and develop in themselves through going through this program rather than just kind of. Be free babysitting if that makes sense or cheap babysitting um mm. but yeah hopefully that's of help if you can persuade your district to pay for osm like they did in north leeds you'll be fine yeah <laughs> i'll use that i'll quote you yeah <laughs> some districts do you know some districts pay for it for the whole district because it's a useful the whole, the whole of north leeds has got it yeah oh, okay <laughs> It's a useful kind of analysis tool yeah. for them. Um, some districts don't. Like my, in my previous group, we we just paid for it ourselves. But for a section at forty three pounds a year, it's yeah. it's well worth it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's it's easy. Explorers, you know. Mm. Um, Okay. Um, is there anything else that would be of use to, to any of you in terms of um, we can talk a little bit more about programs, we can talk about um, other events and things that might be useful for us to, to support you with in terms of in, in our program, um, what, what would be of use to you? I think we've got Becky in two rooms. That's why we can keep hearing her talking. Oh, I'm so sorry. She's, she is sat in the same room as me. Um, that is why you can hear her. <laughs> and um, they can probably hear me as well so um, we've not planned this out very well but that's my fault um yeah Ed, would it would it be useful to chat a little bit more about programs in the last kind of four minutes we've got um anything about events or what what kind of the kind of things your young people want um, and any thoughts i think that there is no problem with getting young people but there is quite a lot of problem with getting leaders mm. where do we go from here Great question. And do you, and th there's no easy answer, but do, do you do you get a feeling as to the, the reasons why we're struggling at the moment? Do you find you're struggling more than pre-COVID? Um, any thoughts? Um, yes, I think so. Before, people did it because they were obliged or they felt obliged. Once you'd br you've had the break with COVID, oh, well, well, I'm not doing that anymore. You know, I've, I've, I've stopped that. Mm, yeah. And, and it's actually getting people to say, I will come and help. And then when they come and help, one, they've got to go to the appointments committee. Two, they've got to have all the qualifications. And three, they give up with a bad job, some of them. It's, it is hard, isn't it? Because it is. we've we've got to make sure that the adults that are volunteering with our young people are the right adults oh, and, and 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 are, are safe to do so. And 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 that process is so important with with the, the kind of appointments process and 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 the training. But I also understand. I mean, training's no different for for us in our roles. We've still got to go through it as well. And 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 I also understand that sometimes it can it can feel like oh, it's another thing I've got to do. Um, and, 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 and I get that. Um, I think perhaps it's, it's, it's when new people are interested, kind of having that discussion of what is, what is the role that you want to go into? And, and, and I'm sure you do anyway, in terms of being, being upfront about with this role, there are these training responsibilities um, and, and kind of explaining the reason for that. Like it's not training for training's sake and, and it's not 
we're not insisting on pe people going on lots of training or doing lots of training if they know things already but we've just got to check that they know those things in order for us to be safe if that makes sense i know that doesn't solve the problem but uh, it's something that i i kind of found helped i think a lot of it they don't realize they can do it online mm. majority of it and once they can they're halfway there, aren't they? That's it. That's it. Andrew, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just come through the back end of that induction yeah. process. It was a pain in the bum. Yeah. Um, what, um, what I thought with all the paperwork mm. is when we met up in the cafe, we met up in someone's house, you could just as easily be chatting and then filling a form out or grinding mm. through that and getting that information down. Mm. You don't have to go home and then go through all the links and as much mm. as possible. And that, that's the kind of CRB side of it. Mm. Training itself is okay, but I think people need forewarning about how tedious it is. <laughs> yeah. It's cool, but it's yeah. tedious because you're doing it it's static. You're not yeah. when you use it. Yeah. Um, and, and in my case, I didn't realize that my, my Friday nights are now um, doing scouts. So if I want to go out on a Friday night, I either uh, don't do scouts or don't do what I was going to do on a Friday night. Yeah. And that, I couldn't have been knowing that up front. Yeah. Um, I don't have kids. It's not like I get any, any childcare out of it. So maybe being more realistic about what it is that the yeah. staff avoid people getting in and then going, oh, I can only do one Friday out of four. Yeah. Which is, I don't know. Yeah. Do you know that? That's totally reasonable. And, and, for me, we we absolutely are open yeah, to people yeah, Simon, yeah. volunteering who can only do one Friday out of four or two Fridays out of four or whatever. Um, yeah. But I absolutely I agree that, that it's so important to be up front. And, and I hope it's, it's a shame to hear that that perhaps that get that kind of paperwork side was onerous because it, it shouldn't be. Um, and, and it should have been fairly straightforward for uh, kind of the DBS to be done while you were sat there, if that makes sense, and and and, and things like that. But um, I think that's something for us to take away in terms of working with other volunteers who do those things to to, to make sure that uh, that that we're doing those things in the most efficient manner. Um, but it's a really good point. Thank you. I think it does come down to how um, either forward thinking or effective your desk or your GSL is, because I know I I do that. I again I like the the term one stop shop, and it you go in there, you you sort everything out, you have a discussion, you do online stuff, and and you it's it's how you talk about the role and and what what the volunteer wants to do, um, especially if they're brand new to scouting. It is if we don't hold your hand and and guide you, it's just going to turn people off, and and it's but. We, we do know we've, we've got some people in role that just assume that you'll go away and find everything yourself or, or things like that. And it, it, it isn't it? at the end of the day, it's, it's like training for any job, isn't it? You, you don't just go in and say, hey, here's, here's some machinery, go operate it. You, you have to be walked through the process and guided. And, and, and the, the important thing is, is review. So keep checking back in and, and new appointments. I always, I never set more than a three month review period because time passes so quick. So if you don't get that in and, and get a chance to catch up with them and say, how's it going? And whether that's formal or informal, but you've got to do that. And then you set a bit of longer, longer term goal and things. So, um, but yeah, it's, I, I appreciate it. it'll be hard if you, if you just sort of thrown in and, and suddenly you find that that's, that's it. You, it's, it's even worse when you volunteer and then find that you're volunteering with nobody else alongside of you. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so uh, but yeah. yeah, no fair. What, what I will say though, um, and, and to, to everybody is thank you for doing what you do, because um, I, I know we all see, um, the, the huge benefit that actually what what we do gives to young people and 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 it's it's kind of why we do it so um um i, I apologize if that's been a, a particularly kind of tedious or challenging process andrew but but um i know that those young people will be so grateful for for what you are doing um so so thank you um i think we've kind of got to the the, the time where we were going to come back together i don't know if um becky are that beavers and cubs still chatting 
one more minute i think they need one more minute okay um uh, yeah they've got a 45 second countdown going on at oh, the moment, okay so, cool. yeah. that's fine <laughs> sorry um, becky is is there anything else that, that that i can be of help with whilst whilst we're kind of on this call to anybody I think from my side, it's, since obviously I was AC Explorers at one mm. point, now I've moved away from that. Mm. I sort of don't hear anything that's coming out of the mm. camp explorers. And I know we we get Beaver and Cub Festive Fun Days and things. Mm. I do hear a lot of gripes. Oh, well, what's happening for Scouts? Yeah, explorers. yeah. I yeah. do believe we've also got to step up to the plate and mm. be part of that team to plan. Um, but again, I, I think we just need to keep focusing on the other sections and yeah and even if it's just about a planning session to get together to yeah come up with the ideas yeah no I, th I think you're absolutely right Andy and and um it's something for me to take away and, and sort of have some conversations in terms of where we go on that but uh but yeah thank you for that okay it's lovely to see um everyone's back in the room now I think um I, I really hope that that was something that was that was really useful for you um, um, what I will do um, is, first of all, just say thank you so much for joining us because um, it's, it's really great um, to, to, to be able to sort of see you, well, virtually see you all um, and, and to chat about um, delivering programme, which, which is obviously what we're all about. It's what we're here for and, and what our young people appreciate so, so much. Um, and, and I just said in the Scouts and Explorers chat, but I'll, I'll extend that to every single person that thank you so much for doing what you do as well, um, because we know how much this benefits these young people and and how much scouting uh, gives to young people and that's only because of what you are doing so um thank you so much for doing what you are doing um i can see there is a um oh yeah ben i've just seen your message there so yeah so the only section that at the moment that has a uh, a section specific leaders facebook group is the beavers and that's only because um quite a number of them asked for that so we put it together the, the one that's called central yorkshire scout leaders group is for everybody so whatever section you're in um that that is that that's the one for kind of the whole county um if there's the appetite for, for other things in fact i can see carrie speaking at the camera and i don't know if she's speaking to us but she's muted um, I was going to say we can create a cup. Yeah. The beaver one's very new, and that's because there was the request for it. Um, I don't know how good the uptake is and whether the beavers are finding it useful, Susanna. But if they are, we'll yeah. still. Yeah, it, I mean, it's very, very new. We've got seventy-five members, but it's a matter of just getting the word out, really. But people are starting to use it by asking questions, what, which is what it was all about, really, sharing information and those conversations between leaders because we've all been there as a new leader and there's no such thing as a silly question mm -hmm. um yeah so we're just trying to encourage people to chat really with and ask for help or ideas from the club leaders that are here is that something that you would find useful right we'll get on that i'd probably leave all the rest to be honest like the first phase but one because it's just too much noise there is a lot of noise on that you're absolutely right Awesome. Nice one. Um, all I will do then, just very quickly, um, first of all, I, I'd also just like to say thank you to Carrie and Susanna and Becky um, for, for, for assisting with, with the session. And um, it's been really, really um, great um, having um, being able to kind of have all of us into it to, um, to deliver that. And like I say, hopefully useful for everybody. Um, I'll just pop up, pop up on the screen our email addresses. Um, it's really straightforward. It's just firstname.lastname at cycscouts.org.uk. But that's how you can contact any of us. And please do feel free to take a note of those if that's of, of any help. Um, our, our inboxes are, are always open to, to be of assistance. Um, if we can be, um, you, you're more than welcome to, uh, to, to drop us a message um, if that can be of any help. Um, I don't know, Elizabeth, how much um, time there is before they're starting to um, set up for the next workshop, but I'm quite happy to stick around and answer any other questions that, that anybody might have. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll stick on the call, so, so do just stick around if you'd like to ask anything else. Um, otherwise, you've got our email addresses. Um, uh, Elizabeth, I don't know if you're wanting to, to, to round up. Yeah, that's fine. We've got probably maximum about seven minutes because we've got, um, but if you do want to hang around and come to the risk assessment workshop at three, you're perfectly welcome to do so. Um, but and if you want to go get a drink or a break between then, that's fine. Um, and But yeah, just what James said, thank you so much for coming and especially for people who've been to multiple ones today, thank you for um, bearing with us. I've just got a 
a quick feedback form I'm going to put in the chat, which we'd really appreciate um, you taking a couple of moments to fill in if you've got some time. Um, cause just because it will help us know how you found the session today and help us shape any support we're able to give in the future and anything else in particular that you're looking for that we might be able to help with. Um, so I've put a link in the chat and then I'll also send it in an email afterwards as well, along with um, some of the things we've talked about today, like things on the website that we um, James has mentioned. But yeah, that's everything from me. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to, to ask them for the next couple of minutes. And if not, thank you so much for coming and, and don't feel like you need to stick around if you don't want to. But but yeah, it's been lovely to see you all. Hey, thank you. Thank You're you. very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. You need to stop the recording. That's it. Oh, yes, I will. Thank you, Andrew. There we go.